Camden's 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery from Seacon. Run the majority of the items in my house that I need to run during grid down situation. Kitchen refrigerator, a microwave, gas furnace, mini split heat pump, a batch of wash, household vacuum cleaner, an electric hot plate, desktop gaming PC workstation. Let's test low temperature charging protection. Let's find out. Let's unbox this. We got some documentation. Down here in the bottom, terminal screws and caps. And here's the battery. The recommended uh, charge and discharge current is 20 amps, but uh, you can charge and discharge up to 100 amps. Charging voltage should be 14.6 volts. You can do four in parallel, four in series, at a 0.5 C rate at 25 degrees Celsius and 100% depth of discharge, it's rated 5,000 cycles. That is, that's actually pretty impressive. It does have low temperature charging protection so we'll test that check this out they've got this page this page this page and this page all about how you can connect the batteries in different configuration i really appreciate that they have a cheat sheet here for cable sizing how long can the secon battery run a full-size kitchen refrigerator this is my primary fridge and uh, use it uh, every day and getting into it all the time so this is a good real world test i put this uh, power station in the middle so this uh, battery will feed into the uh, solar dc input uh, of the power station and that way i can use the inverter in this power station to give me ac power for the fridge and it also acts as a little buffer in case i miss when that dies i'm able to uh, keep the fridge going uh, with this uh, backup reserve. We're also going to be doing a capacity test. So I've got the Victron Smart Shunt uh, here. We're going to be running the uh, power through. Now I do have to just insert that uh, this is going to be less than 0.2 C rate of discharge. So the numbers typically get skewed a little bit to a lower capacity as a result. But because this is about real world tests, it's fun to see what actual capacity you get out of this if you're using it in this situation like running a fridge. As you can see here, I've zeroed everything out. So that way we can see uh, the results from this test. Okay, I'll plug this in. And we'll turn on the inverter. Pull in just over 100 watts. It's 1038. Let's see how long this battery is able to run the fridge for. All right, guys, I just uh, came down to check on the Seacon battery that's uh, running the fridge. And uh, check this out. It still hasn't died quite yet, but uh, we've officially discharged a full 100 amp hours, even though we were less than a 0.25 C rate. And check that out, 15 hours, 37 minutes. So I'm gonna call the test good there. This uh, Seacon battery passed with flying colors. Can this Seacon 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery power a microwave? The inverter is more than capable of doing it. This pulls over 100 amps and uh, so there's a good chance that uh, the battery will kick off on overcurrent protection. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Let's see what happens. Three, two, one. Started it. Yep. So the Seacon battery is able to run a microwave without tripping over current protection, which is good and bad. Good from the standpoint that uh, it will give you a little extra oomph. Bad from the standpoint that uh, it seems to be taking a little while to get the overcurrent protection circuitry to kick in. Again, this 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery from Seacon Power. Follow the black cord. A full size gas furnace. Now we're using this easy generator switch. This is such a handy device for powering 120 volt hardwired devices that are critical during a grid down situation. I'll leave a link for the installation video down in the description below of this. Okay, and the fan is fully up to speed. So this Seacon battery is very easily able to run a gas furnace. Now this does not have any kind of app or anything on it uh, to show us uh, what kind of power draw there is, but from past testing, that furnace uses a little over 500 watts of power. So if this battery is fully charged, it would power it for a little over 
four hours. And that's assuming the furnace is constantly running. Most furnaces turn on for a minute and then turn off and turn on for a minute and turn off. So this could actually see you through for, for quite some time. This inverter is very big and heavy. So this next test we're gonna do with extension cords. Again, the Seacon 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery. Run, follow the extension cord. A 120 volt mini split heat pump. Let's find out. Piece of cake for it. This mini split can pull up to about uh, 900 watts at full tilt. When it first starts up, I frequently see it going to, you know, 650, 700 watts. As it uh, equalizes out, it'll just kind of start to coast and just maintain the temperature once it's uh, brought the temperature down. And uh, I frequently see this only using uh, just over 200 watts when it's just kind of coasting. So that means on a fully charged 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery like we're testing today, this unit here would run for approximately two to four hours. Again, depending on uh, the conditions and how hard this is running. One of everyone's favorite tests, can the Seacon 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery power? A batch of wash. That 3000 watt inverter can certainly handle a load of wash. So the weak link uh, is always the battery. The hardest uh, device to start is the dryer. Now this is a 120 volt gas powered dryer. You can see I've got the two plugs here for 120 volt power. 240 volt uh, plug is not occupied and the 120 volt plug is unoccupied as well. What's hard for a lot of batteries is to get this drum spinning. There's an incredible amount of surge needed to get that going, plus all the heavy wet clothes. So you can see we've got a full load in there, and then uh, we've also got uh, a load of wash to do here. Let's start the dryer. Three, two, one. Ooh, it struggled a little bit, but it's fired right up. So now with that running, the washer will be easy peasy to run with it. Here we go. This battery doesn't have any kind of smart uh, display or app uh, or anything, so we can't uh, show how much capacity is depleted through a batch of wash. But uh, in past times that uh, I've tested this uh, with batteries that uh, have given us a measurement, uh, a, bat a full batch of wash like this uh, will use somewhere between 40 and 50%. Uh, it just depends on how long of a cycle uh, those units are, are set to. All right, well that uh, Seacon battery did a great job. We've got dry clothes in the dryer and a clean batch of clothes in the washer. Again, the Seacon 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery run a full size household vacuum cleaner. Let's find out. No problem at all. Again, the Seacon 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery run Follow the black cord. A high-end desktop gaming PC workstation. We've got three 4K monitors, and we're running a full 4K gaming benchmark on this one to really push uh, the computer. The power is coming in and uh, going into this UPS by Golden Mate and uh, it will tell us the power consumption. So if you look here, we are easily pulling just under 600 watts. So with that power consumption, that uh, 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery would uh, run this computer for approximately two hours if, if the battery was fully charged. Of course, that's if the computer is being pushed to its max like it is right now. Standard things that uh, aren't involving 4K gaming would certainly use less power and uh, as a result, and significantly increase the runtime. Can the Seacon battery run an electric hot plate? This pulls uh, close to 1800 watts, especially right uh, when it starts. That pulls more than 100 amps from one of these batteries. So this is a great opportunity to see if the overcurrent protection kicks in relatively quickly or not. We're gonna use this stopwatch. We're gonna run it for 30 seconds. All right, here we go. All right, there we go, 30 seconds and uh, still going strong. If this has overcurrent protection, it's very loose or it's gotta be substantially more overcurrent than 
this. So that's good and bad. Good from the standpoint that uh, it has the capability and the capacity to run an extra heavy load like this, which which is good. At the same time, I, it's nice to see, you know, some overcurrent protection kicking in, you know, maybe within the 30 second uh, range or, or something. I don't have strong preferences one way or another, because uh, no matter which way it performs, there's pros and cons. Uh, but uh, an interesting test to perform. All right, and the freezer goes. I just got the Seacon battery out of the freezer. I don't know if you can see, but they got some frost uh, there and uh, terminals are nice and frosty. Anyway, let's test low temperature charging protection. We've got uh, this smart shunt here. We've got the positive here. We'll connect the negative here and uh, we'll see if this battery accepts any current while it's frozen. It is allowing current to discharge because the shunt is on. All right, let's see what happens. So the shunt is not recording any power going through. So I'd say this uh, Seacon battery has low temperature charging protection. Oh, and you can see that uh, the charger just went into standby mode, no longer attempting to charge. Low temperature charging protection is enabled with this battery. All right, so how does this battery stack up to the competition? Be sure and uh, check the link down in the description of this video so you can check out this uh, spreadsheet where we rank their performance against uh, all the others I've tested. I've found that to be very valuable for my viewers. It's a no frills, just get the job done kind of battery uh, with a great performance though. It did a fantastic job. That's my opinion. What are your thoughts and opinions? I love to hear from all of you. So please leave comments down below. I try to read all of them and I try to respond to as many of them as I possibly can. You guys are all so smart and have so many great things to share and I love hearing from you. Also, please uh, consider giving us a like and a subscribe, especially if uh, these real world tests are of value to you. Getting three things from you guys really makes all the difference. That's a comment, a like, and a subscribe. And that really gives me the motivation to keep bringing these real world tests to you. You can't tell, it takes quite a bit of time to uh, compile all this information and run all these tests. And so if it's valuable to you, please consider doing those three things. We really appreciate it. And we'll catch y'all next time.